Hello, Namaskara. Hello, dear students. Are you with me? Under the platform of e-shikshan of VTU, we are there here to learn the third module of Engineering Mathematics 3, 18 Math 31, Fourier Transforms and Jet Transforms. This is my eighth lecture uh, and second lecture of uh, Jet Transforms. So, welcome to the uh, class 8. third module eighteen mat thirty one of course we are learning at present uh, jet transforms In the last class it was introduction there are some properties some examples quickly I will revise whatever we have done in the last class. So, if you have not seen the last class also, uh, you may be able to grasp, but uh, always be ready with the pen and pad along with me. If you write, you will also enjoy it. Let us start. Yeah, here we go. So, in the last class, uh, in a nutshell, what we did was, anyway, all of you know that whenever your object is there, its image, if you take in mirror or some other lens, through lens, object and image will not be same. It may be bigger, smaller, very similarly this transform, these transformations, these uh, transformations work. One side object in time domain and one side its, its image in frequency domain. Whatever object is there, it will not be exactly transformed like that. Maybe in convex mirror, concave mirror you have seen, it becomes big, small, some, some other shape it may take. But uh, here in this mathematical transformations, we can retrieve them back. Now, coming back to the actual jet transform, just uh, I am revising, revising, revision of uh, first class. We defined any n function, say, say suppose uh, n function itself is uh, some n square. Anything in terms of n is n square, n cube, cos n, theta, e raised to n, a raised to n, anything in terms of n is our n function. Instead of, instead of, instead of f of x equal to x square, which is a continuous function, which becomes continuous function like this, here un equal to, this is continuous, here un equal to n square, which is discrete, u naught, u1, u2. So, let me not uh, take it again. So, what happens is after the transformation, after the transformation, just like Z transformation, we write F after the transformation, we write Z transformation as Z. Z, F transformation, F Laplace transform L. So, here we are transforming this from domain N function to some Z function via the Z transformation. Something in, something in Z we are going to get. How we transform? This is the definition I am revising. We forcibly bring some Z function z raised to minus n, we multiply or divide by z raised to n, u naught z raised to 0, u naught u 1 z raised to minus 1, u 2 z raised to minus 2 and add all these from n equal to 0 to infinity. So, n will vanish, some z will remain. Whatever z remains, that becomes a function of z. So, this is a object, this is a reflection. For example, the reflection of n square looks like this in the z transformation z square plus z divided by z minus 1 <coughs> whole cube. For every n function there will be a z function here. Of course, afterwards inverse z transformation will be writing this is direct z transform. So, if you go on putting different instead of even if you put n square you will get this value. So, yesterday we listed 
many of such transformations so what are the formula we listed for example first one we listed was z of a raised to n then if you put a equal to 1 a equal to 1 z of 1 raised to n which we call it as z of 1 only then we went to one more n function now first let me write corresponding z functions this corresponding z function was z by z minus a so now for 2 raised to n it becomes z minus 2 for 3 raised to n this becomes z minus 3 for minus 4 raised to n it becomes z plus 4 half raised to n this becomes half here if I put a equal to 1 so I have to put a equal to 1 here so that becomes z by z minus 1 if I put uh, now this is over second one z of n was transformed as z by z minus 1 whole square some more transformations we had third one z of n square fourth one z of n cube fifth one z of n raised to uh, z of n raised to 4 so all these n functions n square n cube n raised to 4 yesterday we saw that i am revising fourth one fifth one so corresponding z functions were and we had some analogy which i will repeat so if it is 2 power it start from 2 here z square plus it will go on decreasing the power so if it is 2 here this power becomes 3 that means next power we are expecting 4 so if it is 3 start from z raised to 3 plus 4 z square plus z at last we have to remember these coefficients so naturally if it is 3 the denominator becomes power 4 z minus 1 raised to 4 so now if it is 4 starting from 4 so only thing is you have to write go on writing z raised to 3 z raised to 2 z z raised to 1 so this uh, coefficients you have to remember coefficients you have to remember so i think many of you are guessing now what is the power if it is 3 it is 4 if it is 2 it is 3 so if it is 4 1 more than 4 which is 5 so inside the bracket always z minus 1 so what we did starting from a raised to n 2 raised to n z minus 2 3 raised to n z minus 3 5 raised to n z minus 5 so this is important many times we are using it z of 1 is z minus z by z minus 1 as a corollary of this z of any constant suppose 8 say 8 it is 8 into because of linearity property 8 into z of 1 or directly 8 into z by z minus 1 like if i write 100 here 100 into z by z minus 1 now one more thing what all you can remember is coefficients here see for n it is 1 1 z here also 1 and 1 11 next coefficients 1 4 1 so 1 4 1 can you tell me the next coefficients 1 11 11 1 1 11 11 1 just like the mobile numbers if you repeat them again and again now looking to this z transform of n so coefficient is 1 if it is raised to 1 you will get power 2 here if it is raised to 1 you will get power 2 here if it is raised to 2 you will get power 3 here if it is raised to 3 you will get power 4 here so the denom denominator no problem at all denominator no problem at all numerator if it is a square it start from z square it goes on decreasing but coefficients you know already 1 1 if it is 3 z cube z square z term 141 if it is 4 4 3 2 1 so 1 11 11 1 
so if you practice uh, you will remember so, so some more examples also we had done based on this shall i do some more examples for practice examples for practice depending on this formula find z transforms what i am doing is i am letting you to get familiar with these see everything depends on how much familiar to those things you are if you are familiar to swimming in a sea samudra dalle you will not fear and you go and swim if you are familiar to uh, suppose uh, riding a bus you can very easily ride it it is all how much you are used to it if you are familiar to solving the problems of jet transforms how much familiar you are okay that depends so that's why practice is important without getting disturbed with the patients again and again you do the same things and get used to it shastrast rudhir gatam rudhil est shakti idiyo adarli bere adarli illa you practice very important practice is the strength find the jet transform of suppose z of so such type of questions for example un equal to 2 raised to n un equal to 5 raised to n un equal to minus 1 by 3 raised to n suppose first i do this first one z transform of 2 raised to n z by z minus 2 z transform of 3 raised to n z by z minus 3 z transform of minus 2 raised to n one more i am including here if it is plus 2 it is plus 2 if it is minus 2 this becomes z plus 2 that is the difference very similarly here z transform of some function of n this becomes a z function small z z by z plus 1 by 3 so these are some examples 1 2 3 4 now in terms of in terms of suppose example find z transform of suppose i write 2 raised to n minus 6n plus 5n square so on and so forth 6n plus some 5n square minus 18 what all we have to do is this is nothing but find z transform first using linearity property using linearity property take the z transform of first function z transform of second function and so on z transform of first function Minus six into z transform of second function n plus five into z transform of third function n square plus last one I mean minus last one z transform of eighteen. So this is the thing, but you can expect such type of questions also in the examination. If you are used to it, you will do it. This is z by z minus two. This is minus six into z by z minus one whole square. Do you remember that? N square is start from z square five. Start from z square one one are the coefficients. One one are the coefficients. Z square z term. If it is two, denominator power will be three. Always z minus one minus constant is something like. Z transform of 18 into Z transform of 1. So this becomes 18 into Z transform of 1. But Z transform of 1, we know that it is Z by Z minus 1. So we can write uh, separately like this. Why not? We should go from reverse. Just afterwards, of course, inverse Z transform chapter is there. But for a practice now only, why not? We should go from Z to n function. Just for for observation for observation i am writing one inverse z transform inverse z transform example find inverse inverse z transforms transformation 
transformation of some function of z suppose i write z by z minus 3 i write minus or plus some eight times z by z minus 1 whole square plus some six times z square plus z by z minus 1 whole cube suppose minus some 28 times z by z minus 1 so looking to this directly suppose if i write without much discussion first of all you should write z inverse on left hand side and z inverse on right hand side so whatever z inverse is there z by z minus 3 plus 8 into z by z minus 1 same thing i am writing plus 6 times z square plus z by z minus 1 whole cube minus 28 times z by z minus 1 then just like z transform z inverse also is linear take z inverse to each term z by z minus 3 this is a notation z i am writing little bigger z like this these are all variables z this is a notation z little big z these are all inside what we have written is variables just like x y z this is a variable so n is a variable discrete variable here z becomes a variable similarly we are taking so inverse transformation of first one plus eight times inverse transformation of second one plus six times inverse transformation of third one minus 28 times inverse z transformation of z by z minus 1 now if you recollect we shall write the inverse formula also if you recollect this is nothing but connected to 3 raised to n or 2 raised to n it becomes z minus 2 reverse from here to here if you go reverse z by z minus 2 becomes 2 raised to n z by z minus 3 becomes 3 raised to n so here it is z by z minus 3 so in terms of n function whatever is there here that raised to n if it is 5 5 raised to n plus 8 times it is in the format of if it is 2 it will be reduced by 1 it will be n z transform of n is this in the reverse way yes, plus 6 times if it is 3 exactly the structure of it is n square z transform of n square is z square plus z square plus z so this is given its reverse order right reverse means inverse z transform reverse if from here to here n square so this 3 indicates and this structure should be same z square plus z and the structure is same here this becomes inverse becomes n square minus 28 this becomes 1 raised to 1 so that 28 into 1 so we get un back from z function from z function to back n function also we got at present i am not going to deal in detail just to keep on observing inverse z transform also i did one example so i'll proceed with the regular z transform and properties but before that please allow me to write uh, because let us encash our because short memory will be there whatever the formula we have written whatever the formula we have written we shall rewrite in terms of we shall rewrite in terms of inverse transforms also now if i write if i write some formula we shall note it and proceed ahead some formula for for inverse z transform now z inverse of 
जेड इनवर्स ऑफ जेड इनवर्स ऑफ जेड इनवर्स ऑफ सम एग्जाम्पल्स वी कैन गो ऑन राइटिंग फर्स्ट आई राइट जेड बाय जेड माइनस ए जेड बाय जेड माइनस वन जेड बाय जेड माइनस वन होल स्क्वायर जेड स्क्वायर प्लस जेड बाय जेड माइनस वन होल क्यूब सो राइट हैंड साइड वी शुड गेट एन फंक्शंस राइट हैंड साइड वी शुड गेट एन फंक्शंस सो करस्पॉन्डिंग एन फंक्शन इज ए रेस टू एन सो फ्रॉम यू ऑफ जेड बैक टू यू एन आई एम कमिंग दिस इज इनवर्स जेड ट्रांसफॉर्म दिस इज वन बिकॉज ए कुड वन वन रेस टू एन दिस इज एन दिस इज एन स्क्वायर कैन यू रिकलेक्ट जेड ट्रांसफॉर्म ऑफ कैन यू रिकलेक्ट जेड इनवर्स ऑफ जेड क्यू प्लस फोर जेड स्क्वायर प्लस जेड डिवाइड बाय जेड माइनस वन रेस टू फोर कैन यू रिकलेक्ट जेड इनवर्स ऑफ जेड रेस टू फोर प्लस लेवन जेड क्यू वन मोर लेवन यूल गेट लेवन जेड स्क्वायर प्लस जेड होल डिवाइड बाय समथिंग रेस टू फाइव जेड माइनस वन रेस टू फाइव सो दैट यू आर गोइंग टू एंड अप विद द करस्पॉन्डिंग करस्पॉन्डिंग एन फंक्शंस वॉट आर द एन फंक्शंस हियर करस्पॉन्डिंग एन फंक्शंस Excuse me. Corresponding n functions, n cube, n raised to four. So these are the formulae for inverse jet transforms we have used. So let us go for the jet transform. Some more properties. Now to see the some more properties, let us use some common sense. Common sense with a lot of application mind becomes technology. Common sense. With lot lot of application mind, common sense written in a very logical fashion, and which has got a proper input and proper output, which is uh, practical, becomes a practical application problem. So now let us use our common sense. Suppose, suppose there is a there is a object here, some object. Before I go to the some properties of the transform, first I will observe the properties. then you will have to frame the theorem for yourself let me see whether you can write the theorem theorem sir go on observing and write a statement for it now suppose there is some object here and i am transforming it through some lens concave lens convex lens or mirror suppose i make it i make this object i make before transformation i make this object bigger i make this object bigger looks like bigger and afterwards transformation first i make it bigger in some lens and afterwards transform it in reality it is like this some n function suppose but what i'll do some 10 times bigger than that if i make bigger here while retrieving it back to get the reality i have to make it smaller corresponding to this some z function will be there so here i have to retry it back by reducing it by 10 times general in general what i am talking is in general on and average if you magnify it you have to here contract if you make if you multiply you have to divide illi doddadu madide illa sanadu madbeku ashte so if you make it smaller here if you make the same object smaller and send suppose smaller means i divide by 10 but while retrieving to get this main object whatever is there you have to make bigger if you divide here you multiply here whatever the size is there same size if at all you want to get back if you change it if you magnify it you contract if you multiply you divide if you contract you magnify it okay so if you divide you multiply so that domain multiply co domain divide domain divide co domain multiply these are known as damping rules but before directly going to damping rules let me observe again in all these chapters first i am writing observe dear students always observation you write down this word on your walls observation is very important so observe that 
such things happen first let us observe it okay suppose z transform of n already we know which is z square plus z by uh, sorry n transformation is simply z, z upon one minute one minute so are you with me simply z upon only one minute z upon z minus 1 full square now i am going to change here i am going to magnify it okay what i am going to do instead of n i'll magnify it by a raised to n okay instead of n i'll magnify it by a raised to n that is i am multiplying multiplying here that means you have to divide this side you have to divide this side means wherever z is there wherever z is there that part you have to make it small while retrieving it when you multiply here structure remains n remains n simply thing is n has become 10z something like that n has become 10n so bigger object is going if at all you want same whatever you have multiplied almost similar almost similar you have to divide for example what is happening please observe very carefully if you leave this part and write only z of n this part you'll get z by z minus 1 whole square now because of multiplication okay this is before multiplication this is after multiplication now this structure i have kept the same but after multiplication in the co domain also you have to get the same means you have multiplied you make it you have made it big and sent you make small and take it back wherever z is there you make it small and take it back or if you simplify a bit you are going to so a will come up a square is there z by a z minus a whole square divided by a square if you transfer here so this becomes a z upon z minus a whole square of course simplification we can see thing is wherever z is there z by a wherever z is there z by a so let us see one more let us see one more all these observations in general any n function it happens like this if it is z of n square you have to get used to it please my dear students you have to get used to it now n function z function corresponding z function n function here to here encryption here to here decryption so here this becomes z minus 1 whole cube now now if i make it bigger z of n square i make it bigger now here and what changes it will get here let us see to make it bigger some multiplication i do which i call it as a raised to n correspondingly this structure how it will change let us see head square head square as it is first i am writing this as it is plus z excuse me one minute Okay. Okay. Z square plus Z as it is. Z square plus. Z square plus. Z as it is divided by this. I am writing as it is. Z minus one whole cube. Now because of this multiplication, because of this multiplication in domain, in co-domain, wherever Z is there, Z by A, Z by A, and Z by A. Of course, simplification is possible just like the previous simplification. i will not take much time because of this simplification taking lcm and all that 
you will get just if you simplify what you are going to get is a z square a z square plus a square z whole divided by this a will come here z minus a whole cube but i am not interested in simplification now wherever z is there z by a so any n function if you multiply by a raised to n multiply here divide here so can you observe some more can you observe some more yes why not multiply here divide here if you observe that z transformation of z transformation of suppose 2 raised to n z transformation of 6 raised to n why not 1 we shall observe 2 and afterwards bundle it as one theorem this is we know this this is z by z minus 2 this is z by z minus 6 now after transformation you here i'll change z2 raised to n i'll change z of 6 raised to n i'll change so i'll make it big i'll multiply by some constant here so corresponding change corresponding change here whatever is there first i'll write as it is whatever is there first i'll write as it is what is the corresponding change because of a raised to n wherever z is there wherever z is there of course simplification we can do wherever z is there wherever z is there now suppose i ask i ask one question instead of a raised to n if i multiply some by some 8 raised to n so wherever z is there z by 8 z by 8 of course in the previous example let me ask that question which is more relevant instead of instead of a raised to n suppose uh, instead of instead of a raised to n i multiply by 8 raised to n instead of a a is 8 so wherever a is there z by 8 z by 8 z by 8 you have to go on writing so a is a constant that's all so that also we shall note now now totally what we did totally what we did okay totally what we did is our conclusion for this observation okay left hand side we went on writing some n functions n functions n functions n functions and corresponding z functions we wrote but afterwards we went on multiplying 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 and here we divided by wherever z is there z by a okay so for every n function we multiplied by a raised to n so what i am talking i'll write that becomes a theorem if uh, if u of n is a if z transform of some n function is uh, something in z then this is our domain this is our codomain then in domain if i change i make it bigger bigger sorry i make it bigger and in codomain what happens let us see u of z as it is i think some of you are getting what happened in the previous cases wherever z is there z by a wherever z is there z by a so wherever z is there z by a in terms of notations we wrote our observation that becomes a theorem now quickly if you multiply you divide here okay in domain you multiplied and in codomain if we divided here the reverse is if i divide here i have to multiply here so let us observe that also let us observe that also suppose suppose if uh, z transform of okay z transform of n is z by z minus 1 whole square now what i am doing z transform of n is z by z minus 1 whole square but what i am doing now i am going to i am going to divide here or this is written as a raised to minus n into n so divide here means in domain in codomain you have to multiply means you are made smaller here you have to make bigger here 
so what what amount you have multiply divided almost similar z becomes multiplication az z becomes multiplication az so can you tell me the similar one for next next one suppose we are getting used to n n square also z transform of n square is z square plus z by z minus 1 whole cube so now i will change z transform of n square i'll change z transform of n square and how this uh, how these structures will change let us see z minus 1 whole cube same thing i have written now change divide by something means divide by areas to n division here here a wherever a z is there multiply 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 okay wherever z is there you are multiplying 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 i want you to write in terms of notation that becomes a theorem known as famous damping theorem why not for some more examples now at least one more example z of some a raised to n suppose n function becomes z function so familiarity now this implies if at all i write same thing first and now i'll change the domain corresponding change in codomain change domain change means you divide by areas to n or multiply by divide by areas to n division here is multiplication here wherever a is there wherever a is there what you did here az 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 minus 8 can we bundle it can you we bundle it in a theorem observation conclusion 2 conclusion second now if at all i am having n function and corresponding z function then what happens is then what happens is then if i divide if i divide here or or the same thing is written as if i write a raised to minus n here so in the domain the division is there in the co domain what happens what happens wherever z is there what you did here wherever z is there az wherever z is there az instead of z instead of z it becomes az so these two conclusions together why not why not we should write okay these two conclusions together okay i am writing dear students a theorem for you conclusions okay two conclusions these two conclusions can be combined or can be knit together in the form of a theorem means they do like this only first they observe and they write theorem of course proof will be there in the form of a theorem okay known as known as known as so let us write a theorem here known as damping rule or damping theorem so already we have written it but uh, in a better way statement of this uh, damping rule or theorem goes like this if z transform of a function of n is some function of z if and then will be there in the theorem then z transform of z transform of a is to minus n here i am changing un that is this is change like this okay let me write in that new format then z transform of a is to minus n if i change here by a is to minus n and that equal to 
u of u of it doesn't remain as z this results in multiplication by this will change to a z okay but as a corollary as a corollary we can reverse this order here you multiply here you divide if uh, z transform of uvn is some function of z then as a corollary i am reversing instead of dividing i am multiplying here so multiply here whatever z is there that becomes divided by e simple 10 raised to n z by 10 5 raised to n z by 5 like that so these two are uh, together known as a damping rule so some more application of damping rule let us see then some more small applications some more examples of uh, uh, what i can write is uh, some more some more applications of this damping damping rule find find z transform of find z transform of a cube n cube solution now we know that z transform of n cube can you recollect start from z cube 141 z from n cube 4 z square plus z whole divided by if it is 3 it is raised to 4 now what is happening in the question multiplication is happening so in the answer it should be division wherever z is there z by a so therefore shall we write by damping damping rule by damping rule z transformation of z transformation of a cube n cube therefore equal to wherever z is there you should go on writing z by a z by a whole cube plus four times here also z by a z by a whole square plus here also z by a whole divided by here also z by a minus 1 raised to 4 of course uh, needs a small simplification let us do that because it is an exam example so this looks like this if you take lcm it becomes z minus a raised to 4 whole divided by a raised to 4 and if you take if you multiply this a cube everywhere here this is uh, of course z cube by a cube let us keep as it is let us make simple 4 times z square by a square plus z by a and this a raised to 4 if I multiply here now so this whole thing will be multiplied by a raised to 4 a raised to 4 a raised to 4 a raised to 4 then it looks like this can you imagine how it looks so that remember this will be multiplied by this will be multiplied by a raised to 4 a raised to 4 a raised to 4 it looks like this it looks like this a z cube plus 4 times a square z square plus a cube z whole divided by z minus a raised to 4 this is a simplification but main theorem is here wherever z is there z by a can you go for n raised to 4 but before i go for n raised to 4 homework for you practice practice examples or i can write practice the same example you do for a equal to 2 a equal to 6 that is find the z transform of 2 raised to n n cube that means wherever a is there here instead of a you have to go on putting 2 2 2 2 here so similarly instead of a you put 6 also 6 raised to n n cube for practice without fail don't fail now i'll go for one more example z by okay find find z transformation of z transformation of un equal to 
a raised to n n raised to 4 solution so we'll not much spend much time here okay z transform of n raised to 4 we know you have to get used to this 1 11 11 1 start from 4 4 3 2 1 power of z z raised to 4 z raised to 3 z raised to 2 plus z if this is 4 this power is 5 z minus 1 now you want to change change this by a raised to n multiplication so that looks like this so that whatever is there here same thing z raised to 4 same thing I am writing z raised to 3 same thing I am writing z raised to 2 z all divided by z minus 1 raised to 5 but because of damping rule by damping rule you should write use that word without fail ok so what wherever z is there you should write because multiplication here division here multiplication here division here z by a z by a z by a z by a of course simplification is very very similar to whatever simplification was done like a previous factor a raised to 5 if you take up you can very easily imagine that a, a z raised to 4 11 a square z cube of course powers 1 plus 4 5 2 plus 3 5 power also is everywhere combining the powers of a and z it is 5 2 plus 3 5 just for the sake of remembering I told a cube z square plus a raised to 4 z whole divided by z minus a a raised to 5 becomes the simplification of course many more many more applications we can do let us remember let us remember remember let us remember ok what you have to remember <coughs> remember sorry remember what we did if at all we have got n function corresponding z function then here multiplication and here division this we shall use again and again one more for example if at all I am having z transform of u n equal to u of z for example again and again you have to observe I will change this by some 100 raised to n into u n so theorem tells that wherever z is there you divide by 100 so, this will be using in problem solving also later on that's why I told remember now we are coming to an very 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 important part of uh, z transformation many times we use this and important question also prove that example next example prove that z transformation of cos of n theta here you should remember that theta is a constant cos of 5n 6n pi by 4n n is variable is z into z minus cos theta suppose if it is pi by 4 z minus cos of pi by 4 denominator z square minus 2z cos theta plus 1 similarly sin is there for sin also denominator same z of sin n theta becomes z square minus 2z plus 1 same as it is but here denominator is numerator is numerator is z sin theta denominator same please denominator same of course we have to prove this now 
Proof? Let us see the proof. How we prove this? Of course, later on we shall apply the we shall apply the damping rule for this also. Proof for this. Proof. All of us, uh, all of us know that Z transformation of one. Can you recollect Z by Z minus one? Now we also know that if I multiply by something here, damping rule tells that wherever Z is there, Z by A. Of course, Z transform of A raised to n is Z by Z minus A. Again, if you divide, if you divide by, if you divide by A and A here, it looks like Z by A divided by Z by A minus 1. So, here also you divide by A, here also you divide by A by A is 1. Now, I will put A equal to some constant. Whichever is not n, it is constant. So, what I will put is, instead of A, instead of A, I will put e raised to minus, e raised to minus i theta. So, here n is not there, no, it is constant. That means what, wherever A is there, you have to put here e raised to minus i theta. So, let us do that, let us do that z transformation of something A raised to n, okay which is already we have got this structure instead of a you have to substitute instead of a you have to substitute that e a raised to n ok this is our this is our a so that you substitute here that you substitute here what we are going to end up with is e raised to minus i theta so put a equal to e raised to minus i theta e raised to minus i theta. So, now we have to simplify this in a very simple way. Observe what I am doing. You just take it to numerator minus becomes plus. So, if you take it to if you take it to numerator if you take it to numerator minus becomes plus e raised to i theta plus i theta z. This also up e raised to i theta z minus 1. So, first step is that. Second step is we are trying to multiply. Okay. So, now again when I divide it, suppose you can write like this also. Divide by e raised to i theta here. Or you have done there only z by z minus e raised to minus i theta. Do you agree? both numerator denominator again e raised to i theta you divide e raised to i theta you divide e raised to i theta you divide every term so that it becomes or directly from this step to this step you can write you can write like this only ok any way you like now next step is next step is we have to multiply both your numerator and denominator we have to multiply this you have to remember z minus e raised to i theta here also multiply by z minus e raised to i theta, sorry, plus i theta. So, this whatever is already there. Okay. Now, we are in need of cos and sin. We know that e raised to i theta is cos plus sin and e raised to minus i theta is a cos minus, cos minus sin. So why you should not why you should not use it now? Denominator and numerator if I write z into z minus into bracket cos plus sin cos plus sin denominator carefully z minus into bracket cos minus sin because of this I am writing cos minus sin. this if I write z minus into bracket because it is e raised to plus i theta cos plus sin cos 
plus cos plus sin. So now remains is uh, I'll take little liberty here. What we did z transformation of z transformation of see what we did once again. Please see. We want to prove this sin and cos. We are encashing e raised to i n theta. Now e raised to minus i n theta is there. E raised to minus i n theta. Yen if you multiply here. Yen theta you can write. Then if you multiply here, you can write n theta. So that I can write. Therefore, z transformation of e raised to minus i n theta. Now, at last, if you simplify, it starts looking like this. Here, real part is this part, which is z into bracket z minus cos theta. Okay. The imaginary part minus of i into. Okay. Minus i into z sin theta simply. Z sin theta. Numerator quite straightforward. Denominator I am taking liberty here. Please uh, see that you will try this. Z square minus 2 Z cos theta plus 1. If you multiply like Z into Z Z square, you will get then cos theta terms. Cos theta terms you will get minus 2 times Z cos theta plus uh, you will get sin square theta plus cos square theta 1. Such terms you will get just multiplication of these two. But now, if you write this uh, e raised to i something, it is nothing but z transformation of cos of n theta minus i into sine of n theta. And if we equate the real part to real part equal to this, this as it is, this as it is, whatever is there, this as it is, you can write this part. Whole part, copy paste here. Now, if you separate the equate, equating, equating real part to real part, imaginary part to imaginary part, real and imaginary parts. So we are left with real part is z of cos n theta. And that is going to be that is going to be real part is first term divided by the denominator. First term divided by denominator. So what is first term? Z by z into bracket z minus cos theta whole divided by whole divided by z square minus 2 z cos theta plus 1. Second one, if you equate. Real imaginary part to imaginary part. Hence, this is the proof asked. Practice this. Denominator same. We know already. Z square minus 2 Z cos theta plus 1 is same. Numerator once again we shall see. It is nothing but Z sine theta. So I have to write Z sine theta because both imaginary parts are negative. So minus and minus also minus and minus also is getting cancelled. I and I getting cancelled. Imaginary part means without I. Imaginary part means without I. Some people write I also. We should not write I. What is the imaginary part of real and imaginary parts? Two is the real part. Three is the imaginary part. Not three I. Three is the imaginary part. So I'll just uh, delete this. Bet. So based on this, uh, based on cos and sine formula, based on cos and sine formula, we can do some examples. Suppose, for example, find z transforms of cos of pi by 4 n sine of pi by 4. n okay so now here theta equal to pi by 4 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 this is our theta theta is pi by 4 therefore what you should write is first you have to write the formula these two formula you should write and write put theta equal to Theta equal to pi by four. 
so we will get z sin of cos of n pi by 4 as z minus z into z minus cos of theta means pi by 4 whole divided by z square minus 2 z cos theta means pi by 4 plus 1. This can be simplified wherever cos pi by 4 you can write 1 by root 2 z z minus 1 by root 2 whole divided by z square minus 2 z 1 by root 2 plus 1. Of course, one more simplification possible we are not interested in that. Similarly, for sine transformation what I can write is what I can write is z sin theta it is sin theta instead of theta pi by 4 z square minus denominator same z square minus 2 z cos pi by 4 plus 1 wherever sin pi by 4 is there you can write 1 by root 2 and 1 by root 2 here also so z by root 2 z square minus 2z by root 2 plus 1. So, these are the examples of uh, uh, cosine sine. So, today we have revised the previous class z of 1 is z by z minus 1, z of a raised to n is z by z minus a, 2 raised to n z by z minus 2, z of n z by z minus 1 whole square, z of n square z square plus z by z minus 1 whole cube, z of n cube, z cube plus 4 z square plus z by z minus 1 raised to 4, z of n raised to 4, z raised to 4 plus 11 z cube plus 11 z square plus z divided by z minus 1 raised to 5. So, similarly we wrote the damping rule, if you divide here you have to multiply there. So, z of a raised to minus 1 into un is wherever z is there you should write z by a z by a, we use that damping rule. Also, we use this damping rule to prove that, uh, prove this sin n pi by 4, cos n pi by 4. Some more examples. At last, dear students, we are going to use this to solve differential equations. But this is discrete, that is why they are not known as differential equations, difference equations which are very useful in the signal processing and communication theory. Please open any signal processing book and see difference equations how they are solved. Today, you do that, go to your library or go to the sorry go to some uh, signal processing uh, book ebook and open it see that the jet transforms are being used you also should take some pain go to some books and see where these applications are being done so we'll meet once again in the third class of jet transform till that bye from pr ampioli head department of mathematics klsg it balagami take care of yourself we shall meet for third class of jet transform very soon bye